Welcome, everyone. Today, I want to talk about a topic that touches all of our lives. Worry. We all worry about different things. Our families, our jobs, our futures. But I want to remind you that God will sort it out soon. So we need to stop worrying. Worrying is something we all do. And it's perfectly normal. It's part of being human. Maybe you're worried about your job, your kids, your health, or your future. We all have things that keep us up at night. But here's the thing. While it's natural to worry, it can also take over our lives if we're not careful. Worry can steal our happiness and make us feel anxious and alone. Have you ever felt so worried that you couldn't enjoy anything? Or felt like you were carrying a heavy weight on your shoulders all the time. That's what worry does to us. Now, here's the good news. God knows about our worries. He sees what we're going through, and He cares deeply about us. He doesn't want us to be burdened by these worries. Instead, He wants to help us carry them. God is saying to us, give me your worries. Let me handle them for you. When we trust God with our worries, He gives us peace in return. So remember, it's okay to feel worried, but we don't have to let it take over our lives. God is here, ready to take those worries off our shoulders. We just need to trust Him and let go. Now, let's talk about peace. In the Bible, Jesus gives us a special promise about peace. He says in John 14, 27, peace. I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. What does this mean for us? First, Jesus is telling us that he is leaving us with his peace. This isn't just any kind of peace. It's not the kind of peace you get from a quiet evening or a vacation. It's a deep, lasting peace that stays with you, even when life gets tough. Jesus also says that his peace is different from the peace the world offers. The world's peace is temporary and often depends on our circumstances. For example, we might feel at peace when everything is going well, but as soon as problems arise, that peace disappears. But the peace Jesus gives us doesn't depend on what's happening around us. It's a peace that comes from knowing that God is in control, no matter what. It's a peace that can calm our hearts, even in the middle of chaos and uncertainty. Finally, Jesus tells us not to let our hearts be troubled or afraid. He knows that life can be hard and that we can feel overwhelmed by worry and fear. But He is reminding us that His peace is greater than any trouble we might face. So. Whenever you feel anxious or afraid, remember Jesus' promise. He is offering you a peace that goes beyond our understanding, a peace that can comfort you and calm your heart, no matter what you're going through. Trust in His promise and let His peace fill your life. My friends, let's talk about what it means to cast our cares on God. In 1 Peter 5, 7, the Bible tells us to cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. This is such a comforting and powerful message. Think about when you go fishing. When you cast your fishing line, you throw it far out into the water, right? The Bible is telling us to do something similar with our worries. We need to take all our anxieties, all those things that keep us up at night, and throw them to God. Why should we do this? because God cares deeply for each one of us. He doesn't want us to carry these heavy burdens on our own. Imagine you're carrying a heavy backpack that's making your shoulders ache. God is like a friend who comes along and says, let me carry that for you. This verse is inviting us to let go of our worries and trust that God will take care of them. It's not always easy to do, especially when we feel like we need to control everything ourselves. But God is saying, Trust me, I've got this. God's care for us is personal and profound. He knows every detail of our lives, every fear and every worry. 
and he wants to help us when we let go of our worries and give them to God. We make room in our hearts for his peace and comfort. So next time you're feeling anxious or stressed, remember this verse. Take a moment to pray and tell God about your worries. Imagine yourself casting them out, just like you would a fishing line. Trust that God is there, ready to take them from you, because He cares for you more than you can imagine. Let go and let God handle it. Beloved, let's take a look at Jesus as an example of how to handle worry and anxiety. Even Jesus, who was perfect and divine, experienced moments of deep worry and anxiety. One of the most powerful examples of this is found in the Garden of Gethsemane. On the night before he was crucified, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. He knew the suffering and pain that awaited him. He knew he was about to be arrested, beaten, and nailed to a cross. This knowledge caused him immense distress. The Bible tells us that Jesus prayed earnestly and was so troubled that his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. In this moment of intense anxiety, Jesus did something very important. He prayed to God. He poured out his heart expressing his fears and asking if there was any way to avoid the suffering that was to come. Yet, despite his deep anguish, Jesus ended his prayer with these words, Not my will, but yours be done. He trusted in God's plan, even though it meant going through unimaginable pain. What can we learn from Jesus' example? First, it's okay to feel worried and anxious. Even Jesus felt this way. But instead of letting those feelings overwhelm him, he turned to God in prayer. He was honest about his fears, but he also surrendered them to God, trusting that God's plan was ultimately for the best. Jesus shows us that while it's natural to feel worried, we don't have to face it alone. We can bring our worries to God in prayer, just as Jesus did. We can be honest about what we're feeling, and then we can choose to trust God even when we don't understand his plan. So, when you're feeling anxious or afraid, remember Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Follow his example by praying and trusting in God. It's a powerful reminder that we can find strength and peace, even in our most difficult moments, by placing our trust in God. The book of Psalms in the Bible is like a treasure chest of comfort and encouragement. It's full of verses that speak directly to our hearts, especially when we're feeling overwhelmed and worried. One of the most comforting verses is Psalm 46, 10, which says, Be still and know that I am God. This verse is a gentle reminder for us to pause, take a deep breath, and remember who God is. When life gets overwhelming, it's easy to get caught up in our worries and forget that God is in control. We rush around trying to fix everything ourselves, and we often end up feeling more stressed and anxious. But this verse tells us to be still. It's like God is saying, Stop for a moment. Take a break from all the chaos. Remember that I am here. Be still. Doesn't just mean stopping our physical activity. It also means quieting our minds and hearts. It means taking a moment to push aside our worries and focus on God. When we do this, we create space for God's peace to enter our lives. The second part of the verse, know that I am God, is just as important. It's a reminder of God's power and presence. God is bigger than any problem we face. He is always at work, even when we can't see it. Trusting in this truth can bring us immense comfort. So whenever you feel overwhelmed, try to remember Psalm 46. Take a moment to be still. Find a quiet place. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Remind yourself that God is in control. He is powerful, loving, and always present. This simple act of being still and remembering God can help us shift our focus from our problems to His presence. It can bring us peace and reassurance, knowing that we are not alone 
and that God is always working for our good. Next time you're caught in the storm of life, let Psalm 46, 10 be your anchor. Be still, trust in God, and find comfort in His unfailing love. My dear friends, let's talk about something that's really tough for many of us, letting go of control. We like to be in control of our lives. We want to solve our own problems, make our own plans, and fix things our way. But sometimes trying to control everything just adds to our stress and worry. The Bible gives us a different approach in Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your path straight. What does this mean? First, it means trusting God completely. Trust in the Lord with all your heart tells us to put our full confidence in God. It's about believing that He knows what's best for us, even when we don't understand His plan. The next part, lean, not on your own understanding, is a reminder that our own way of thinking is limited. We see only a small part of the picture, but God sees everything. When we rely only on our own understanding, we can make mistakes and miss out on God's greater plan. In all your ways, submit to Him means that we should turn every part of our lives over to God. This includes our plans, decisions, and worries. It's about saying, God, I trust you to guide me. I trust your wisdom more than my own. And the promise that follows is powerful. He will make your path straight. When we let go of control and trust God, He will guide us in the right direction. He will help us navigate through life's challenges and lead us to where we need to be. Letting go of control is hard because it means we have to trust someone else with our lives. But when that someone is God, we can be sure that He will take care of us. He loves us deeply and wants what's best for us. So. Next time you find yourself trying to control everything, remember Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Take a step back and pray, asking God to help you trust Him more. Let go of your need to control every detail and allow God to guide you. Trust in His plan, and He will lead you on the right path. By letting go and letting God take control, we can find peace and assurance, knowing that we are in His loving hands. It's a journey of faith, but it's one that leads to a life filled with God's guidance and blessings. My friends, trusting in God's plan can be one of the most challenging things we face. We like to be in control of our lives and make our own decisions. But trusting God means letting go of our need to control everything and believing that His plan is better than our own. Jeremiah 29 11 gives us a beautiful reminder of God's plan for us. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. What does this verse mean for us? First, it tells us that God knows the future. He has a perfect plan for each of us, filled with blessings and hope. Even when we can't see the whole picture, God sees everything clearly. He knows what is best for us, and His plans are designed to bring us good things. Trusting God's plan also means believing that He wants what's best for us. Sometimes we might face challenges or difficulties that make us question God's plan. But His promise in Jeremiah 29, 11, assures us that His intentions toward us are always loving and good. When we trust in God's plan, we let go of our worries and anxieties. We stop trying to figure everything out on our own and instead rely on God's wisdom and guidance. It's a choice to surrender our will to His and to believe that He is working all things together for our good. So, the next time you find yourself struggling to trust in God's plan, remember Jeremiah 29, 11. Remind yourself that God has a purpose for your life, a purpose filled with hope and blessings. Trust that His plans are far greater than anything we could imagine, 
and allow him to lead you into a future filled with his goodness. As we conclude our time together, I want to leave you with this final thought. God's love for us is unfailing. His wisdom surpasses all understanding, and His presence is constant. No matter what challenges we face or how uncertain our paths may seem, we can trust in Him. He invites us to cast our worries upon Him, to find peace in His promises, and to walk in faith rather than fear. Now as we close, let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I bring to you the struggles and difficulties that weigh heavily on my heart. I ask for your guidance and strength as I navigate through these challenges. Please, grant me the resilience to overcome any physical ailments that I may be facing and provide comfort and healing to those around me who are also battling illness. I lift up those who are burdened with emotional pain, asking for your enduring peace to fill their hearts and minds. May your comforting presence be with them, giving them the solace and hope they need during this difficult time. I also bring before you the financial obstacles that weigh heavily on me and others in our community. Grant us the wisdom to make sound decisions and the perseverance to seek out opportunities that will lead to stability and security in our finances. God, I believe in the possibility of miracles, and I humbly ask for your intervention in the lives of those who are in need, whether it's a miraculous healing, a breakthrough in financial struggles, or a sign of hope in the face of adversity. I trust in your power to work wonders in our lives according to your divine plan. May we find comfort in surrendering to your will and trusting in your perfect timing for each of our lives. Please grant us the strength, hope, and peace to endure these trials, knowing that you are with us every step of the way. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.